hello everyone. Thank you for your patience. How is everyone doing? Happy Sunday, wherever you are in the world. Uh, just have a confirmation that audio is all good on my end from anyone from the ADSR live stream on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, wherever you're tuning in from. How's everyone doing? It's been a little while. It's been a month since our last one. And yeah, we've got a fun topic for today. Okay, happy Sunday. Thank you, Derek. I presume that means you can hear me. Either that or you have incredible lip reading abilities. <laughs> <laughs> hey, MV Beckham. I just seen in the Discord that you've been, uh, you know, away for a bit. So awesome to have you back. Hello to Brent from Brent. Yep, yeah, we have another Brent on the ADSR monitoring. So Brent Bishop is uh, here again today, which is awesome. It's great to have him back and working with us again. Sounds good on YouTube. Fantastic. So. Last time we looked at sound design jargon busting and we were just basically doing a bit of a coverage over all things terminology when it comes to sound design from basic sort of stuff to more uh, intermediate techniques and we're going to be able to put those to use today. Last stream was focused on more with synthesis and synthesizers. This one is exactly you know the same narrative but we're going to be working with more with samplers actually um so a lot of the terminology will still apply which will be awesome um I, i've got some really really fun stuff planned today just a quick breakdown for anyone who's curious obviously these are now two hours long um mv beckham you were wondering the new schedule i'm not entirely sure about the other one with elena but mine is the second sunday of every month at 6 p.m uh, Greenwich Mean Time. So, for the rest of the world, I think it's like 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Don't hold me to that, but I think it sounds about right. Um, yeah, so let me know where you're tuning in from today, anything you'd like to learn, any questions you have. Usually the running order here is, we'll do questions halfway at the hour mark, or if it's sort of, if my eyes catch it and I'm, I'm sort of, it's relevant, then I'll, I'll always try and pick them up as I'm going through. So the running order today is, we're going to be doing the first hour, it's 2 p.m. here. Where are you then? Um, creating a virtual instrument sound library. So we're going to be using samplers to actually create our own virtual instruments. And we're going to be looking at how we can basically create um, playable instruments using sort of like notch, very tight cue filters on sort of like Foley and found sounds. A lot of the guys over at Spitfire Labs um, channel this into their lab series of products but I think it'd be cool to understand how to do it yourself so you're not just relying on the presets and the sounds that come with the labs products if you can do it yourself with your own samples you can really create your own sound which I think is the unique part and you can imprint a little bit of your artist or sonic signature and all this stuff it's 2 p.m. in Indiana okay is that like in India Indianapolis Indianapolis am, am I saying that right uh, thank you for tuning in as well, Derek. I've seen uh, you were like you were bored, <laughs> so thanks for sticking around. Ah, Virginia Beach. Ah, okay. Quite the eclectic mix of people from all over the globe here, which is awesome. Um, we've got a bit of stuff from everyone today. I've got some. Uh, I've got some samples from a group of people on the ADSR Discord. Um, and in terms of the stuff I'm going to use today, I'm going to be using Presonus' sampler, but this is basically just like a different visual way of understanding the Logic and the Ableton sampler simpler. So honestly, all of this stuff is translatable. I just feel like Studio One, there's a bit of a crew that started here for Studio One on YouTube and on, and on ADSR in particular. And I feel like it doesn't get much love for sound design. And there is a lot of powerful stuff it can do. Hey from uh, Sweden. Lovely country that you're tuning in from. Hello, Henrik. Um, and I'll be using pigments. I'll be using the ADSR sample manager to host uh, my samples and also to grab some samples. Um, and I might also be using EFX fragments, a new granular audio processor from Arturia. And I'm going to use FabFilter Pro Q3, all the usual suspects, maybe a bit of cable guys. And also Slice EQ from Kilohertz, because at this moment in time, Slice EQ is completely free if you buy anything on the ADSR store. So I'd highly recommend picking that one up because it's a really intuitive, you know, parametric visual um, EQ. And the fact that you can cop it for you know, as little as probably like a dollar or two. There's probably some bargain you can pick up on the store. I probably should be pushing those big, but you know, just uh, just pick it up if I was if I were you guys. Um. So yeah, the first hour we're going to be creating a virtual instrument sound library, and then sort of 
going in that we'll be using a slightly different sampling method and um, we'll probably be using other users samples for that part I've got my own samples for the the section where I'm going to be showing you how to create these playable instruments from literally foley found sound ambiences so they're basically like forest sounds and city sounds and stuff like that second hour uh, we are going to be using the ADSR Sample Manager to organize, tag, and program our parts. I'll probably be using that for drums. You know, two hours is a long time, but if I'm completely honest, to do what I'm trying to do and then create drum samples, probably pushing the boat out a little bit there for two hours. And we have a stream that's already dedicated in the playlists for um, create your own drum samples. In fact, I think we have maybe one or two. Uh, hey, from Brighton. Nice to have someone from the UK. Um... Hey, Playboy Bowley, thanks for being here. Hello to Farning81 on Discord. Good to see people coming in from all channels here. Uh, then in the second hour, we're going to be creating the presets and pigments for the tracks. Um, and again, I'll be using user audio for that, basically creating custom wavetables. And we'll try and bring everything together into a sort of like a, a rough track to, to get a bit of an idea. Um, I already have Slice EQ. I'm missing the other one, Carv EQ. Hmm. I presume I have Carv EQ because I've got everything from Kilohertz, all great stuff, but I don't know the one that you're talking about. I'll have to check it out. Um, and anyway, so the in summary, follow along. We'll be kicking things off any minute. You can follow along with me. If you're a Studio One user, I'm going to give all of the uh, Sample One instruments away on Discord, um, probably tomorrow once I've uploaded them, or maybe have time to do them today in the stream. And if you're not a Sample One or a Studio One user, I'll use the audio files and, again, put them on Discord, and you can just download them and load them into your sampler or Ableton Simpler, Logic, etc., stuff like that. So, awesome. Um, f any chance of that being a freebie? Hmm, I have no idea. But you never know, though. We do land some pretty cool stuff with um, people at the minute. Uh, but, yeah, hey, Simple Sam as well. EQ siblings. Ah, right, so they got a working conjunction. Cool. Maybe is Carve EQ like more colourful or something? Less surgical? Hi from the Netherlands, Dan. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll just wait like literally one more minute until ten past of the hour, wherever you are in the world. Wow, thanks to no I don't feel as bad. Ah, it's okay. Yeah, there's been loads of giveaways. Um if you haven't got the sample manager, you probably should because you can pick up a lot of free packs as well like there was 303 pack the other day from tb303 um so yeah like i said though any questions please feel free to ask away as much as you like and i'll try my very best to answer anything if there's anything that's maybe more specific to adsr the store discord the stream you want the other brent you want brent bishop so adsr mentor will be uh on that for facebook instagram not instagram well um uh, youtube all the usuals Wow, it was a lovely sunset, I'd say. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let me just turn off the old big cam and work our way over here. Da, 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 da. Here we go. So this is the sampler that I was on about from before. This is uh, Sample 1 XT, and uh, obviously I spend quite a bit of time in Ableton as well. Um, and I kid you not, these are more or less identical, just differently laid out. Just to give you a rough idea, this is where I drop my sample in. This is where you map it to a key range, so you could load in different samples and have them play different key ranges. And then we can control envelopes here, or we can control them here if you prefer visually seeing your breakpoints and stuff like that. Hands up anyone who's using Studio One, just interested, or just let me know what door you're using regardless. The cool feature of this one, which I don't see on a lot of samplers, is you've got this record uh, feature, so I could actually record from an instrument or an input so that that's quite a cool way of actually so i could have someone come in like a session basis they're gonna I, I really love the sound of their bass but sadly they're gonna leave me well i tell you what i could sample a couple of notes and spread it out and map it and there you go you've got your own sample and essentially you're creating your own library of sounds there so that's what we're going to try and work on today there's a lot of fun we can have with it but um there's also the effect section down here which is quite useful but we don't need it as of now um Oh yeah, Blaze FM, you're a hybrid user like me. I don't know about you guys, but I use a range of doors these days. I kind of really settle. I'm in Studio One, I'm in Ableton, and I'm also, uh, I use a bit of Luna. Um, yeah, I just find that the reason the reason rack's meant to be fantastic, and I've still not touched it, which is ridiculous, so I certainly need to use it. I'll just double check as well. Can you guys hear all this? <laughs> Showing 
up loud and clear on my levels here. Awesome. Thank you, Henrik. Thank you, Playboy Bowley. Okay, so we've got more people in now, which is great. And I think we're about to have some fun. Okay, uh, so yeah, just to anyone who didn't catch it, we're going to use the uh, sampler that's native to Presonus. This is universal for any sampler on any door. Slice EQ, Arturia's new EFX fragments. Not on the ADSR store as of yet, but I imagine it will be there in the future. But they, regardless, they've got an introductory offer on. Um, and honestly, I, anything Arturia does is just great. It's not promo whatsoever, not being paid here. It just is fantastic stuff. I love everything they do. Okay. Without further ado, let's get into it. So, uh, someone mentioned something before about labs. I can't remember what the question was, I'm afraid. Um, I could probably scroll back and find it later. But basically, labs from Spitfire. A lot of the instruments are great. And, you know, for free, it's like, there's just so much good stuff around now. Um, but basically, the um, what we're going to do is we're going to work with our own sounds to try and create instruments a bit like labs, and we're creating them from field recordings and found sounds. So let me uh, let me just load in. I think I could probably go in here, actually. I could also probably manage these if I was a little bit more organized in my life using the ADSR sample manager. Okay, samples. Here's what I've got today. I've got, uh, so these are my samples from a, from a Zoom recorder. ADSR is off someone on the chat. I think they said it was like a vital cello thing. Ooh, this is Hydra's stuff, Hydra Tech. He's got some fantastic stuff. It's clearly, uh, you know, rendered to Unity again so that you can use it straight away. Some cool sort of dubstepy rhythm growls. I must mention, while these are fantastic already, we're going to be using them in sort of like a non-traditional way. Um, let's have a look. Oh, we've got a rhythmic bass loop from Hydra. Cool. Okay, here's some zoom recordings. A fire. You know, I say this way too much, but please use good headphones if you can. Okay, rain. Extremely loud English countryside bird song. Airport. I think this is like a party. <laughs> totally random. You'll see what we can do with these. And then city sounds and, you know, the usual chaos. So we've got a lot of contrast here, haven't we? Yeah, Hydra, uh, anyone who's not aware, Hydra Tech is a fantastic, uh, young and promising sound designer, producer, and he's got a couple of products on the ADSR store, and he's been kind enough to give us some sounds from a new pack that he's working on, I believe. So it's awesome to see that people are coming to these streams, and, you know, they've obviously got all this st stuff going on, keeping busy, learning, getting educated, and, and making some cool sort of, um, you know, community around their sounds and stuff, which is fantastic, so... You know, you can take this chance to learn and then almost make it a part-time, full-time career. See what you can learn and gauge from it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with one of my Zoom recordings. Let's see what I've got. Let's start off with the airport. And close my browser. Um, and yeah, I could uh, drop this into the sample manager. I will do it at the end because I'm going to show you how you can use the sample manager basically just to organize this basically the stuff that you can download for use if you want uh, in your own sampler and then I'll make the sample one XT stuff available as well. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to use an EQ in a rather untraditional way and this is how it's all done with stuff like uh, with stuff like uh, Pro Q3 
with stuff like the Spitfire Labs instruments. I'm sure most people are probably very familiar with that stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a point and I'm going to pitch this to 440 hertz. The reason that I've done that is because 440 hertz is the tone, or in this case, the resonant tone of an A interval. Um, and we don't have to worry about major or minor here. We're just applying one fundamental interval. Then when we map it to our sampler, we can decide on the harmony later on. So now that we've got that, we want to basically tighten the cue. And we want to boost this band's gain. And we can duplicate the these uh, across the octaves. So we could do like 220, 440, uh, 880. You get the idea. If you're good at maths, you probably figure that out a lot quicker than me. Um, and this is a way of basically giving a resonant tone to our parts. And this is how it's it's done with found sounds where you, you sort of... I, I feel it's hard to communicate what I'm trying to say. But basically, Labs from Spitfire Audio is a really good example of this. There's a lot more like it as well. And essentially, they have these instruments like um, Thunder Song or the sound of London Underground Atmos, and it sounds beautiful. You can play it, but that's about all you can do. You can't really do anything else to it. It's just to sort of use it, but you can actually make your own. What we're going to do is going to boost this, and I'll tell you one thing. If you're going to follow along with me, back your output off when you do this because it can get a little bit, like, a little bit hot. I think these max out at 30. Okay. So I've saved your ears there and mine. So I think you can all agree there's a huge change there in, like, fundamental harmonics. So we've applied a, a notch filter here. Cool. Uh, let's add another one. And let's go for 880. Tighten up our cue. And let's boost that just when that horrible screaming baby came in as well. And obviously you have to fine tune the gain of these bands in. There's another way we can work around it as well if you are boosting and it's just distorting too much or clipping. So you can hear we've got a duplicate there. Um, I would suggest that add more points than just the one. You could get away with just doing the 440 hertz at A. If we do more, we get more even harmonics. And that means that when we play it back through our sampler, we can take advantage of different ranges of the frequency spectrum. So we can maybe fill this out as a pad with low end as well as mid range content. Whereas if we just put this one, we're probably going to struggle to map it down that far. So let's add another one. And this one's going to be a 220 hertz. Okay, I feel like this one is just sore. Sore hertz. Now, the reason this is a little bit unconventional is because typically making a boost like this will create a resonant filter. And yeah, that's exactly what we're doing, but we're doing it in a musical sense, less so. Um, you would never boost like this at this level or this sharp. But we can, that's the thing with sound design. It's quite different from mixing. So try and get out of the mixing workflow. Let's add one more. Um, at 110. It's a, a Hey Simple Sam. It is exactly like harmonic synthesis. I think it's actually got a slightly different word to. It's very like harmonic synthesis because what we're doing is we're essentially trying to create like artificial sine waves, like resonant tones via sine waves. Um, I feel like it's got a different word though. It's like it, it is harmonic synthesis, but I'm sure there's a fancy tech. There's a nice low fundamental. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these and just uh, bring down the Q values, make them a little bit more even, make sure they're all on the right notes as well. 220, 440. Okay, and you could just keep going here really with you know it depends on what you want but this is a mid-range focus instrument that i'm trying to create okay so what i'll do now is i'll slightly widen the cues of all of these bands if you slide them like that you can do all that and i've backed off the output level here quite a bit okay let's come back here I'll even just create a loop. Okay, let's do a before and after with the resonant filters that we've created. So these are all bell filters, by the way. 
So what's really nice is we've managed to retain the character of the sound without losing, we, we've added the fundamental harmonics to it, but we've not lost the character, which is obviously that ambience, the sound of the airport and what's going on. It's very unpredictable in nature, which makes it feel organic, which is what people like to do these days. Me personally, as a, a sound designer and producer, I try and incorporate a lot of synthesis and then sort of like found sound stuff from that exists in a, a raw format in the sounds. What we could do is we could tidy up a bit as well. We could maybe apply some low pass filters. Uh, let's apply a low pass from, we'll do a really slow filter from like 60. And we don't have much content from sort of 10K above. So again, why not tidy it up? Do another very slow filter. I'll probably sharpen that up, actually. That baby. <laughs> Talk about ruining it. <laughs> so, because the sample is continuously changed and evolving, there's a lot that happens here, and individual harmonics become more dominant or less dominant but what we've got there is good so let's bounce this down i'll do uh what's my my shortcut key would be i think i haven't got the right pro tool shortcuts on i think general keyboard shortcuts nope i have it says pro tools i what i need is the uh do you want to refer to the keyboard no nope. The baby is going to be a star. I need to mix down the selection, bounce selection. Basically, uh, let me render this audio. Da, 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 da. Bounce to new track. There we go. Okay, now let's have a listen to what this file sounds like now. Should just be everything with the rendered effects. Okay, Airport Atmos, excellent, time to go into our sampler, and here we have the wonderful Sample 1 XT, and all I can do is just drag it in, um, and there's a lot more we can do to it now, obviously, uh, it's automatically mapped itself across the range, you could change this, and there's a lot more we can do here, but essentially now, uh, this immediately will follow the the uh, the registers of the mapping so it should be polyphonic uh, let me just change things here so there we go we've got a a C minor although the roots probably probably uh, uh, let's just check I should probably change the root note here to an A3 let's try that Okay. Let's just check them in the right region. Cool. So you can hear this is starting to sound like music, not just like recorded sound. There's a lot of things that we can do with this and we've done in the past, like, you know, use this as a noise oscillator and layer it in with other sounds. And we can totally do that as well. But this is a totally different approach, really. Um, so let's continue to uh, if we use follow song tempo, this is basically like warping equivalent in Ableton. So it's cool, but you lose a lot of the character when you start going up the register. It'll, although it'll follow along in time, it'll not increase it's not like pitch modulation, you do lose some stuff to it. Like up here. So I personally would say for a part at least, it's not really worth it. So let's zoom into some part that's a little bit more interesting. Very, very interesting, very interesting. Uh, okay, and then we've got the mapping, we've got the envelope, so for a for a, a pad sound, let's start with the pad, we can maybe change the ADSR of the main amplifier envelope, so trying to keep on top of 
um, the people who, again, some people here I know are, are probably very confident with what they're talking about and what I'm showing, but Catering for Every User, ADSR is our Attack to Kate Sustain Release. We've got a lot more in-depth content around this on the channel, but essentially it's a way of shaping the envelope of the sound. So basically just the way that it is played or performed over a period of time. So if I boost the, the A, the attack of the amp envelope, ignore the filter and the pitch, what this means is the um, initial uh, sound won't kick in as soon as I hit my keyboard. Um, and that's because we've lengthened the attack. So here's an extreme example. Takes a long time to come in. Uh, a zero attack. Good for, you know, basses, plucks, leads, stuff like that. But we want to create a little bit more of one of these. Uh, what synth is this? This is Sample 1 XT. I don't know if maybe you can get third party support for it in other doors, perhaps. I'm not 100% sure. Got a sustain panel under here. Cool, let's start introducing a high pass filter. Um, not a high pass. HP 12, yeah, that's what we need. It's too dramatic there, isn't it? This is a drive stage filter. Let's try. That's cool. We can drive it a bit. Yeah, it's a great sample uh, sampler, Pablo. Pablo, are you a Studio One user yourself? Cool. I like what we have there. Uh, like I said, we can use some of the native effects in here, so I don't want to overcomplicate things. Although I will be building some custom insert chains, saving this as an instrument, and then making it available for you guys. Uh, Philip, will this work in the Ableton sampler? A hundred percent, absolutely. And yes, Pablo, confirming it. Much appreciated. Uh, I am also an Ableton user, and all these principles apply. So if you create the notch filters and everything that we did with, with the bell filters with the sample and drag it in the simpler. I would, again, see if the warp mode in Simpler suits the effect that you're going for. I would, I'd use the warp mode more for transient material, you know, like keys or plucks. Um, but for the pad, I would leave warping off. Let's start adding in some effects then. Cool. And we could probably change the duration of the sample. We can search through here to try to find new points, you know. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? <laughs> There's that baby, man. <laughs> it's like there's some vibes there. I'm not sure if you... That is interesting. I might just do this part here. What we need to do is uh, loop this. And we need to add a crossfade because we're getting some clicking. There we go, we got rid of the click. And I like this part of the sample, so there's a lot of stuff we could do here really, isn't there? Cool. I like that a lot. We could come in the envelopes and we could do a little bit more shaping. So we've got a filter envelope here. Um, we'll keep this one the most basic preset. So we've got a pad now, haven't we? I've got a little bit of pitch modulation going on at the start there. Let's get rid of that. Let's just check that. Okay, we're in the perfect key. So it's very important that you uh, change the root note to A3, which is what 440 hertz is. So cool, I like what we have here. And again, if we follow the song tempo, just to show you once more. 
it's just not got the same translation, sadly. Mainly for pads, though, mainly for pads. Awesome, I like that one a lot. So what we can do is we can store this preset, instrument and effects preset would be if we were to load some more instruments. Um, I could export this instrument, which is exactly what I will do for you guys in uh, Studio One. And I will send you the preset, the, the WAV file, if you want to drop it in Ableton, in our Discord. So if you're not a member of the Discord, I'm sure that uh, Brent Bishop ADSR monitor will be able to maybe hook you up with a link or something. But basically, um, Discord is a good community where we all collaborate. And I'm always putting stuff up on there after streams, whether it's free serum presets, pigments presets, or samples, or virtual instruments like this. So uh, let's store this preset. Uh, I'm going to call it Airport Atmos. And we'll call it the ADSR 1303 live stream. Oh, I'm getting a bad back. Sound like an old man. Uh, I think there must be a subfolder somewhere, but let's just save that. And again, can we... Uh, okay, so we can store that as a sample. Let me just double check that all works. Oh, wonderful. There's the Discord link there, guys. So this, this stuff that I'm talking about, you can either follow along, but again, these samples are my own samples, but you can either follow along or you can grab them some point, probably tomorrow I'll upload them. I'm just going to drag in another sample one and be absolutely confident that we have created a preset. Absolutely awesome, I love that. So, so cool, so cool. Okay, um, let's work on another one. Uh, and what we'll do here is, so we've got this airport Atmos file. Let's layer in another file. Let's drag in uh, one of these. Let's have a look. Okay, so this is like the fire. Um, let's drag the fan filter on here. Okay, I love that you can still hear the sound of the, the fire and stuff, it's fantastic. Let's get rid of the high roll off because the, the information on here is quite important. Okay, I love that, I think that sounds fantastic. I'm going to do a little bit of processing this one just with a simple Haas um, effect and widen this up because it'll add to the, the sort of stereo magic of this preset. Again, if you can wear good headphones, that'll do you a lot of uh, help understanding how I'm creating all these. But I'm just boosting the level, got rid of the high pass filter, leaving all of the notches the same because it's the same process essentially. Uh, bounce to new track. Uh, so here is the rendered file. Okay, I love that. So there's a couple of things that we can do here, right? I can either l layer this in with the existing sample, so I could like add another sample into this preset and say that I want this one to play, map it to a different region. But currently, they're both playing all over the board. Uh, change the root note of this one, very important. So we've got like a, a multi-layered uh, a multi timbral instrument now. We've got this one, and can we rename them? No, we cannot. Um, so, um, oh man, Sam, simple Sam, this is the only thing that gripes me about Ableton. You've got to freeze the MIDI, you've got to bounce the MIDI. It's just like, why? Why is it so complicated? Everything else in that door is absolutely perfect, but come on, you've got to be a workaround for that quick bounce. It's just rubbish. <laughs> Rant over. Um, so, yeah, um, should get my cable to uh, tangled. Um, so yeah, this is now basically playing as two. F I, if I wanted to rename these, I would have had to do it before, I believe. Um, but yeah, this is the second sample here, and this is adding a nice sound to these as well. Really cool. So what we could do is we could maybe change this sample as well. You know, like uh, find a section of it that we like. And let's put it onto a loop mode. A crossfade. 
And we could pitch this up. Sadly, the pitching does get applied to both, which is a shame. But I suppose we're creating a multi timbral instrument here. So I would suggest if there's anything you want to do to uh, one of these files before you bring it in the sampler, process it beforehand, you know, basically resample and then drop it in and then you get you get like a really cool blend of stuff. Hey TI-80 Mark, I believe you're here on our last one. Hey everyone, able to join for a bit but we'll need to catch the first and a half layer. Yeah, not a problem at all. Thanks for joining us. We are, to recap, we are basically creating... Uh, virtual instruments in Sample 1 XT, you can do this in Logic Sampler, you can do this in Ableton Simpler, Ableton Sampler, Cubase, you name it. Um, and we're creating these files by, just for anyone tuning in, we're basically using FabFilter to create um, intervals. So 441, 10, 220, 880. We're creating intervals of um, the A harmonic and bringing these into a sampler and making our found sounds from the airport and fires, which are these. Oh, there's another one. We are turning these into stuff like this. So I honestly think that this is a great sampler, but as always, there's always, you know, things that you would... this gripes, isn't there? But I wish I could just bring the level of this down slightly, which is a shame. I suppose I could just bring down the amp envelope, but I don't know if it, yeah, I think it, get applies, it gets applied to them all, sadly. So this is a multi timbral instrument. I quite like this. I think it sounds cool. So there's an example, but if I just go back to Airport Atmos, we've just got our original file. I think let's keep that how it is. Cool little hack there from Lee Robinson, who says something about a sort of workaround for Ableton rendering to a location, which is interesting. Go check it out. Um, so there we go. I'm happy with our first instrument. Uh, let's go back to our default and we'll start to create. So basically, we're creating a sample library of our own sounds here. So let's create another instrument from uh, one of these files. Let's use. Let's use the. Uh, Let's use this as a, an, an actual original instrument. So bring this in, change the root node to A3, which is a fundamental. Okay, and let's create a turn our loop mode on, sustain with a crossfade. My bend thing has like a life of its own on here, it's weird. Okay, what we're going to do then is uh, we are going to just zoom in and try and find something and turn this into more of a, a like a more of a pluck. Okay, let's uh, bring the decay up. and bring the gain up. So you hear it has a lot of tonal characteristics. I really like the sound. We could start to add stuff to it. I'm getting carried away. Um, <laughs> let's just keep the uh, envelope where it is. So this is an in instance of where the follow song tempo would probably be more appropriate because... Whereas if we don't have follow song tempo... It's going to play back at the tempo of the original sample. If we just zoom in these a little bit more. Increase the crossfade. like that part there. OK, 
Okay, it's got a lot of interest to it. Um, cool. Let's, uh, so we, I like what we've done here, but let's maybe, we, I feel like we could create something else from this. I'm getting carried away again. Pitch envelope. What we're going to do is we're going to basically create a pitch envelope here and maybe get some sort of like, sort of like drum, sort of um, physical modeling capabilities. <laughs> In fact, let's leave that for later. That would suit an, like an 808 really well. Okay, I kind of like this. Uh, let's apply some filtering. And a bit of chorus. Ping pong effect on here. We got a dotted. Let's just try the reverb for now. Okay, cool. So we can use this as like a, a plucky layer. sustain if I want to make this in there. Cool, okay, so this will do for now. I think we'll stick with the uh, high pass. Feel tempted to apply some LFO to the amp. Not to the pitch, my goodness. No, back to normal. <laughs> pitch to the uh, the filter might be cool. There we go, we can create a bit more of like a... I originally wanted it to be a... a I definitely originally wanted this to be more of a a pluck or a lead, but I think I've changed my mind. It's got some cool sort of characteristics, you know, for uh, for like a, a, a movement type part of, you know. Anyone wondering, this was created by the sound of a crackling fire. So it just shows you the possibilities are endless. Uh, cool. I think this sounds cool. Uh, I, I still tend to do more processing to it. Like a game. <laughs> it's a shame we can't get something to modulate the gator, you know? This could be really fun. This could be really fun, actually. Okay, okay I like what we have here. Presets in here. On the LFO.
And last thing, a little bit distortion, just to warm things up. Cool. I think that this from this original sample, in fact, no, that's not the original sample. This is the original sample. No, that's not the original sample. This is the original sample. Good headphones required. And we've changed it to this. Class, sounds fantastic. Let's save this one, store it preset, and call it, um, Crazy Crackling Fire. I kid you not, the hardest part with all this is naming um, naming your presets, your samples. Yep. Okay, cool one there. I like that a lot. I'll just quickly see if there's any comments because we are soon approaching our halfway mark. Got a bounce already. Catch you all next time. Thanks for tuning in, TI80 Mark. Hopefully you can catch up later on. Oh, thanks for saying love it. I hope you can use these techniques or something in your own stuff. You like the wobbly sound? Awesome, yeah. Uh, wasn't this a fireplace? Uh, no, it was an outdoor fire on a beach. So always record stuff, even if you've just got your air. Uh, even if you've just got your air. Uh, these are all recorded on... No, they're not. Some of them are recorded on an iPhone. Some of them are recorded on... It's hard to see here, but the trusty Zoom recorder. And also repping the Arturia stuff again. I recently did some content for Arturia on this bad boy. And I tell you what... Oh, Craigie. Fantastic interface. And oh, these are so cheap now. These were so expensive when I was getting in recording. And even for me, that it's probably relatively cheap compared to anyone who's older than 30 or something like that. Um, cool. Cool sounds. Cool sounds. Let's keep moving then. Uh, any questions on anything we have, feel free to ask. And uh, we can come back uh, and uh, always answer them for sure. Uh, buh, 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 buh. I'm just trying to find my shortcuts. Thanks, Playboy Bowley. Yeah, I think that sounds like a great sound. Uh, and it's cool that you can store them and load them up. Next preset is going to be a bit different. And I'll show you why. Uh, like what we got here, then. Oh, yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do something a bit different altogether. So let's take this sample. Da, 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 da. Oh, my goodness, that's loud. Woo! Apologies. Damn. This feels like something out of the uh, Dark Knight. Or possibly Spider-Man. So what we'll do is... You guys probably know the routine by now. Uh, not all of them. Not all of them MV Beckham. Um, some of them are recorded on... Uh, the trusty iPhone, because this uh, this is the 11. S the mics in this are really good. Uh, but then quite a bit of it was recorded. Yeah. This guy, it's actually quite old now. I think it's maybe five or six years old, but it still kind of trumps anything else, to be honest. It's a really, really great piece of kit. It's a Zoom H6. Um, and you can l put four XLRs into it. Great for sampling, great for recording. Comes with an XY mic, um, SD card, and great battery life on it. Really, really good. Uh, so let's do the same thing what we did before, but this one I'm going to basically bounce three years. That's a Zoom brand, that one, yeah. Uh, let's apply this to the uh, to this, and let's have a listen to how, how this changes. <laughs> I like this one the most. Oh my goodness. This is such a drama this is so dramatic. Wow. This feels like it could be this single track, this single feel recording could be something quite soundtrack esque, you know? You could totally use this on something to 
depict the sound of like a chase scene you know it, like it would f the music would suit it's almost like sound design combined with composition it's like a riser yes it's like a riser man that's cool man that's cool let's drop in yeah i'm craving the countryside birds let's do the same thing so we're going to do something a little bit different with this one by the way we're going to basically layer and render resample multiple layers together and create that as one instrument uh super massive free plugin grab it if you haven't already if you haven't what you've been doing <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. It's a little past that. That's great. Okay. Let's render these together. Mix down selection. So that's slightly different rendering capability there. Where we're going to render both these tracks to a single audio file. It sounds like the Dark Knight, right? Yeah, this sounded so like um, a shepherd tone. Hans Zimmer's favourite thing to convey tension with one note. It was kind of like that. I don't know, it just made me think of the uh, the shepherd tone, the string rising for when the Joker's like, yeah, that scene. It's really cool, actually. Okay, so you can hear we've bounced them both to one layer. So if we come back into uh, our good friend Sample 1XT, uh, we've got crazy crackling fire, we've got airport atmos. Let's have a look at this. This is our sort of pad. I want to make adjustments already, I can't help myself. And this one, that was made from a crackling fire, that just blows my mind. Fantastic collection we're getting here. Okay, now we're going to drop this one in. So this one, what's different about this one? Um, that Yeah, that was one of Hans' best scores, without a doubt. I love Tenet, though, that Ludwig Granson did. So this one is going to be a bit different because this one is a multi-sampled layer of a couple together. So rather than having them both in the sampler, we've bounced them beforehand. It gives us a little bit more flexibility working with audio that way. Oh, wow. Well, I feel like these are, these are awesome. What I feel so great about this is this is that one time you can make sound design so unique to you because even if someone was recording in the same place as you, they probably recorded at a different time, a different a different place in the location. It's incredibly unique, and that's there's not much left in music that's unique apart from the songwriting process itself. We all have access to very similar tools, um, so this is where you can really get your sonic architecture for your sound you know, working from what you, what it is you want to imprint on your music. Oh man, that's crack is good. That's crack is good. Okay, so I think uh, the mapping is. There we go. It needs to go a bit further down. I was wondering what's going on there. Oh. Wow. The ProQ preset, will it be available on the Discord? Uh, I can make it available if you'd like. Yeah, sure. Now I have a reason to watch Tenet. Never did because I wrote... Oh, Tenet was not... It was a very complex film to understand, but it was worth watching. If you love Nolan and all of his films, then you'll enjoy it. It was a fantastic film, in my opinion, honestly. The, the score was worth watching it alone, you know? Sure, I can make the preset available for ProQ3, absolutely. I'll put everything in there tomorrow. Sample XT, my virtual sound library, um, the preset side, anything I've used, I'll try and drop everything in. Oh my goodness, that sounds so fantastic. What about, you know, as this was a riser, Oh no way! This is this is it's like a self-made riser, isn't it? Wow! Blend that in with a little bit of white noise, and that is crack as good. Man, 
who knew that this could be so fun? Like, I mean, I'm saying that and I find everything fun to do with sound design. Studio One is your fave door. Thanks for tuning in, Quentin. Yeah, you're here for dual Brent content. Honestly, in the UK, Brent is probably like one of the most uncommon names. I think it's a lot more common in America, am I, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is Organic Riser. Oh, you've gave us the title and everything simple to sound nice one. I feel like we could really spice this up with some mad distortion. Black off in the master. It's funny, it doesn't it has a rising tone from the actual the, the actual sound of the place. Obviously I've imprinted some fundamental harmonics onto it, but it does have some interesting characteristics. Let's try and go hard with there. That fuzz is not very... Oh yeah, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Now we're... Now we're tenet. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Let's save that as a patch and then we can just work on it again with something else, you know? Wow. Um, store preset. Okay, we all know what we're going to call this one. Tenet Bass Pulse. And then I'm going to come back and create the organic riser, Sam, don't worry. 1303. That's just too good not to take home, you know? Let's do a little bit of EQ here. If you notice the levels here, we're not getting, it's getting louder, um, perceived loudness is getting louder, but the actual levels aren't going up because the beauty with distortion is we're applying soft clipping to the waveform, so we don't have to worry here that we're clipping stuff, you know? Oh, you know, again, another request here for Studio One um, developers. Can we create macros for Sample One XT? Like, I would love to have a macro for this LFO control here because how cool is that just going? I'm going to have to save that as another one. Uh, store this preset as a tenant bass pulse with LFO. Not very original name, I'm afraid. Feel bad about that. Okay, uh, let's go back a couple of steps, if I can physically remember how to do that. Um, remove our gate and the distortion and the EQ, and uh, let's remove the LFO and all of this. And yeah, okay. And the filter. Okay. This one is called Rising Organic Riser. Okay, we've got quite the collection now. My goodness, I didn't even intend on creating effects, but wow. Look at these. These are all created from... Ding, ding, ding. We've hit the hour mark. These are all created in the last hour. I think that's phenomenal. Well done, guys. <laughs> I feel like that one can do with a boost, to be honest. Crazy crackling fire. Okay, next one. 
happy life you should be going, hey, the Batman. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So cool. Oh yeah. Tenant bass pulse. We've got such a good palette of sounds here. I feel like I even I'm surprised with how awesome these are, honestly. Great. Okay, we've got five really good ones. Let's do one more. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. Man, what a whirlwind. I have to say that all of the EFX have that cinematic feel of emotion to it. Great job. Thanks, EFX? All of the EFX? Do you mean EFX... EFX S24, the uh, the sampler in Logic, perhaps? It got a big update recently, didn't it? Oh, yeah, it needs a brown. Brown. That would be hard to achieve, but I'm sure we could do it with some sort of like sawtooth wave layer then. Um, we're really just touching the iceberg here, though, with these presets. Like, there's so much stuff we could do with them. And I feel like Pigments doesn't... In pigments? Studio One doesn't get the... Uh, attention that it deserves with sound design. Sorry, I have a question here which I think I missed before. Do you need to shift the notch fill at the left or the right if you want to hit different notes or is it just as effective? Bounce it out and pitch up the sample. Hey Ben, so um, I think you're referring to the very initial stage when we grab a sample and we apply a filter to it with the bell notches. Basically, I pitch them to any duplicates uh, like divisions of 440 hertz which is our fundamental frequency of a3 so i do more frequencies around it just depending on what the source material is like you know because if it was something that's just mainly low end there's no need to do filters that are going to go up higher etc or if it's just mainly high end likewise we don't really need to do stuff down 110 do we um so um oh no 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 not a problem at all ben um so so then what happens is i then bounce once I've put the fab filter on said um, audio, so for example, we come back to this one. This was it originally. And then I applied the fab filter. Then I render that to a file with sort of like I'm printing the effect onto it. And then I can basically drop that into a sampler. Say to the sampler, hey, the root note is A3, because usually it defaults to C3. He says, even though... Oh, organic riser, it doesn't matter. I tell you what, though, it does matter for tenor baseballs. <laughs> so, yeah, you got to change the... Otherwise, basically, later on, things aren't going to play ball. Update preset. Um, things are, So, make sure you tune them the root note to the crack one, and then this one needs to be pitched. Come on, man. Update. So, I, I hope that has answered your question, roughly. Hey, Larry boy. Larry boy, you've missed out on some awesome content, but you can always wind the clock back and watch, you know, catch up with this. But we'll do a one hour stop summary. Any questions? I mean, I've just answered a big one there. Hopefully that helped you out, Ben. But recap. Okay, excellent explanation. That's fantastic. Please take it up. So basically, uh, Larry, since you're such an awesome and notable member of the family here at ADSR, we've been taking samples and we've been applying uh, to these found sounds just, you know, I've got sounds on the beach of the fire, I've got sounds in the city, um, and we apply these filters at frequencies that basically create, uh, recreate a fundamental harmonic for that piece. So here's, the, for example, the fire, I believe, beforehand. Okay, and then we put on to the, the Pro Q3. I hope you can hear that. Another example was, like, oh no, that was the rendered one. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay. Now this is maybe the city escape, and without it, then what we do is we've been bouncing them down in audio and dropping them into Studio One's native sampler, and we've created. Uh, this is our recap for anyone who's just tuned in. We've created ourselves a collection of our own bespoke sample library, basically, and this is what we've got. We've got Airport Atmos.
cool like vibes on that one the, the the beauty of this is every sample is so unique and it has a lot of imperfections which is you know like not necessarily imperfections but like nuances this was the one that was created from the fire so that is everything we need to know then we went down the dark night route going hey the bad man i feel like that's getting old uh tenet bass pulse a lot of distortion on this one notice nice even level here i'm on zimmer level what <laughs> okay tenet bass pulse with lfo they definitely be benefit be used in 96. Uh, yes, absolutely. P basically, the one of the very few times that I use 96k is for um, is for if I could speak is for pitching up and down because then you avoid like artifacts and aliasing. So yes, a hundred percent. I think I think the zoom which I use can go up to 96 or possibly 192. I'm not sure, but the, uh, the I think the iPhone is pretty restricted. Unless they maybe is like a dedicated app like Filmic Pro is like it turns your iPhone in with DSL. You can control aperture and stuff. So maybe someone, if I had the know-how, I'd love to know how to make an app that was like turn the iPhone in with super sampler. Joke. Someone's probably suddenly beat me to that already. Oh, that doesn't look like sample one. Um, so this was Tenet Bass Pulse with LFO. This was our final one. Fantastic. We've created our own little sound library, and I think, honestly, they sound fantastic. I really, really like them. Uh, they're all just a single sample that's mapped across, you know, the range. And you could just get wild with this and drag more and more and more. And in fact, what could be interesting is you could drop the original sample in as well um, after you've pitched it up. But I, I feel like these already sound good, so why? Why go any further? They sound great. Um, and then what happens uh, to anyone who's just tuning in? If you're an AD, uh, if you are on an ADSR Discord server, and if you are a Studio One user, I'm going to make all of these uh, virtual instrument presets for Studio One completely free, uh, and you can just load them in, and they're yours to use. Free, whatever you want to do. Don't worry. There's no royalty payments going to come knocking on your door. If you don't have Studio One. Um, I'll give the rendered audio files uh, and then you can basically use them in your sampler of choice and I think I can actually do that like this uh, export multi sample file and basically then you can use that in your sampler there's also one more thing we're going to do okay uh, because the beauty of sound design is never stopping uh, we're like kids in a candy shop we can basically layer in some more stuff here uh, da -da 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 my cable guys shape a box to cool uh so what we can do is i could layer in some more stuff here for example uh there was something cool i had seen recently with like a, a pattern in here so here is uh our let's go back to something like the airport atmos and what we have is this and yeah pablo picasso you've picked an awesome name there i'm surprised that one wasn't already taken from a taken from youtube's uh, user community that's incredible that you've managed to bag that name <laughs> um so by using uh something like external effects i can start to add to this these instruments and these presets with stuff that sample one xt maybe doesn't have available to it and you know what i'm thinking i'm thinking stuff like shaper box i'm thinking stuff like kilohertz all of this stuff uh, this stuff all of this stuff you can pick up on god my back man i kind of get comfortable all of this stuff you can pick up on the adsr website by the way so um often there's deals on it and like i said you can pick up slice eq at the minute which is awesome um but you can pick all this stuff up on the adsr website and earn loyalty points as well which is great if you want to grab more samples and make wicked presets like what i'm doing here <sighs> okay uh let's have a look at some of these just to show my uh idea yeah every second sunday of the month pablo tune in please it's great to have you here um and same goes for anyone else you know this uh there's always time to be had 
reverse. Not really hearing the effect of that. I, I'm just using presets purely because of the time, but... Oh, my sweet Mother Mary. That one could do with uh, backing off in the master mix. Uh, let me just try and find something. I think the noise could be... A so you can actually load your own noise into here as well. The world It's just so advanced now in terms of the stuff we can do. <gasps> I've missed the best part. Shaper box is fantastic, but what am I doing? These sounds require EFX fragments all over them. Oh my goodness. This is going to change everything. So basically, one of my favorite... Yeah, Devious Machines is awesome. Devious Machines, I've got by them. Infiltrator, Texture, and another one which I can't remember. Um, okay, so EFX fragments, Fly by Tour. This is basically granular synthesis and one of the reasons that I love our friend pigments is it has a fantastic granular synth engine in it which is diddly diddly diddly, it is in the sample engine and it's down here in granular so what they've basically done I think is they took the granular engine here spiced it up a bit put it into a plugin and made it even fancier um, and the presets are fantastic but the ability with this is awesome this is really really good yeah devious machines hype in the chat great stuff so let's see what happens if we apply uh, Waterfall Octave is currently my favourite preset already, would you believe? But this is applying this to our Sample 1 instrument. So what we can do is we can store this on we can store this on the uh, preset, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Where's the grain mix? So, I like that one. I think that's good. Let's go. Uh, store instrument plus effects preset. So this is Airport Atmos with effects, and uh, that'll store these effects here. And then I could also store this effects chain here. So I could store this effects chain and give it a name and say this is for this preset and yada yada yada. You get the idea. So basically, I can store them with the effects as well, which is really really handy. Um, so Airport Atmos, Airport Atmos with effects we get fragments and anything else that's into the sampler but yeah there we go i think this is it's safe to say that this is phenomenal considering this started out as the airport and the fact that this started as a crazy crackling fire come on you would think that was totally made in serum or something absolutely it was it's a fire My bend control on this MIDI keyboard is gone. It's not working anymore. Okay, I feel like we've got some great stuff now. We'll start to lay these down, show you how the layering of these is going to be awesome. Uh, let's just mute everything here. Uh, and uh, da, 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 da. let's pack these into a folder. Where are we looking? Pack folder. Um, audio. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to show you with creative sampling is using something to become anything. That is a bold statement. Um, but basically, from before, we have these from uh, ADSR Community. So we got this file here, and we got some of these. <laughs> These are awesome. So these are from Hydrotech. And uh, I've loaded it in the sampler here. And this is a default preset. So. Wow. Really great sounds from him. Let's have a listen. All notes off. Uh, sorry. Follow song. So 
So I'm going to basically turn this into something completely different. Basically a bit of an untraditional view at uh, creating samples. It's a great sample to begin with, don't get me wrong. You could you could do a lot with this on its own, without a doubt. Uh, but let's, uh, let's go on to a loop mode and find a slice of tasty audio. And what we're doing here, just as a general summary, First hour, we were creating virtual instrument sound library. We created the point at the 440, Titus Q with the found sounds, repeat the process, widen the queue. Another thing you could do, which I didn't mention, is you can double up your um, instances of the EQ to make it more dramatic. So, for example, you could have a fab filter EQ with the notches, the bell curves, and then boom, do it again, just duplicate it, and it basically intensifies the. Um, the effect uh, because you're doubling the range of the because it can I think it stops at 30 the boosts and cuts uh, so now what we're doing is we're, it's, it's, we're working with samples again we're working with sort of found sounds these are from other people completely random samples but rather than apply and pitch them because these have already been pitched um, these are we're going to basically use micro sampling so we are looping pitching and changing the amp envelopes zooming in and we can do a lot with these which you would probably not be aware of i think you can do so if we basically select a really small, a small a small amount So I'm, what I'm doing, first of all, I'm looking for an area where I like it. This is quite consistent. It's from a synthesizer, obviously, and it sounds like consistent. It's not like the audio files where it's unpredictable. There's nuances. We know what we're going to get here. So if you look and zoom in, we look like we've got sort of like um, some distorted sine waves. Maybe it's like being some sawtooths. We s eventually, everything is a sine wave, though, when you zoom in. Um, so what we'll do is we'll take a tiny, tiny, tiny portion of this okay just trying to find a nicer part that's a bit more harmonically rich I like that better this bend control on my keyboard oh my goodness change the root note because it's apparently in G minor okay the, again another request here is I would love it if you could add yeah uh, it would be great to be able to um, turn off like locking here you know Okay, we've got a lot of low end there, cool. Uh, let's do a bit of filtering. Just take off some of the top end, and we'll use a pitch envelope. Uh, actually, let's change our amp envelope. Okay. And let's do the same thing with the pitch envelope. And at the start of the stream, we were talking about 808s and how basically an 808 is like a drum and a bass laid together, and we're trying to... Uh, we are trying to uh, we're trying to basically create like physical modeling characteristics of something hitting something is also the, you know it's not just the instrument it's whatever sort of excites it's known as an exciter so we can achieve that with synthesis with pitch modulation it's bend cool Okay, we're getting somewhere. Not a great EQ, that one.
Right, so we're uh, we're getting into eight oh eight territory. I quite like that. I think it sounds good. Uh, what's the mapping here? Yeah, it's mapping all the way. So we've changed that sample. B -b -b -b. In our own sort of playable sample. I actually think one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come off the EQ um, and use a, a dedicated EQ. So... Let's basically pass up to the, the fundamental harmonic there. And let's add um, Persona's Compressor. And have a sharp attack on it. got a bit more knock to it it's a bit more control as well now the only thing I would love to do here is a bit of glide I feel like that's got to be I'm sure that control does exist here oh cool you can reverse as well didn't know that uh, there's a glide control somewhere I'm sure oh man I've got a list of no um, changes that I feel are necessary then Oh, glide time. Oh, God. Sorry. I feel like I've just blown up everyone. Sorry. Definitely put it in mono. And turn glide on. Oh, yeah. That's what we're looking for. away from nothing that would have worked by the way with a that totally would have worked with a um with the hi-hat or any sample honestly because of micro sampling we're going down to the the smallest possible micro samples that you could have done that with a lot of things okay there's a plugin from a uh, studio one called red light district awesome plugin <laughs> Yeah, put glide on it. <laughs> okay, and we've created via micro sampling a tasty little eight oh eight store preset and instrument and call it Hydra's eight oh eight. Okay, we got quite the collection going on here, my goodness. Oh, wrong thing. Uh sample one. Hydra's eight away. Oh, we got so many things here. Okay, come back to this. I, I'm actually going to store this preset bank, store an effects chain called Hydra's eight oh eight, and now that's available. So now, if I recall that instance of sample one, I can recall the effects chain as well. So it, that's awesome. Yeah, Decap would be impressed with this. This does knock. Okay, I feel like we are reaching a point where we can start to layer and build something. So let's. I really love what we've we've created today. I think this is some extremely unique sound design. Uh, so you know what I I brought pigments into this and stuff, but I feel like we'll stick with sample uh, the sample one XT because it's got everything that we we need so far. There's not much need for anything else. What's the transient again? Just a byproduct of the attack. The transient is the initial attack of any of the sound, so it's it it is. Like the it is the product of the attack, um, but it's um, the body like it's like transient body and sustain. So that's the way to think about it. Um, you could make this knock even harder with something like a transient designer. KHS transient shaper. I have. Oh no, I have used this. Woo! Something not right there. 
Ah. I've changed from the uh, 808. That's why. Yeah, so you could use a transient shaper. Okay, you could use that on here. Uh, what's creating the knock effect in this is actually not uh, anything to do with uh, the attack. It's the pitch envelope. So if I take this off, I'm using the pitch envelope with this ADSL, and you can see it better here. Pitch. And basically, I have increased the envelope's um, amplitude. So what this means is you can achieve this in Ableton. And uh, this is basically pitch modulation, and that's what's creating the knock. And yeah, we can enhance it. Awesome. Whoa. There's got to be an output control on this somewhere. Oh, that has ruined my ears, man. Sorry. Put it before the compressor as well. Crikey. Oh, we've got a clip mode. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, uh, this is cool. That's that. That's that control going again, I can tell. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the pitch modulation. Glad that helped you. Okay, let's start off creating a track then. I think something which has a very, very clear harmonic sort of content to it is probably the best way to start. Let's get rid of all this stuff here. And uh, we're going to create a very basic sort of loop or a beat in our last half hour. Any questions, guys? Or if you've missed anything, you can roll back the clock and watch it. Today's been... I would say my favorite sound design sessions we've ever done. Um, it's just been really fun, you know? Everything's been created completely organically from our own samples using the most basic. If you haven't got this, you could just pick up a sampler like Wave CR8 or oh, it's got to be loads of samplers, you know? But like, I think people are uh, like, we, we, we go to Serum and stuff, and but there's a lot of stuff we can do with just samplers. <laughs> There's that bed marker. Oh my god. Stop please. Okay, let's let's record something. Horrible, horrible metronome sound. Sorry. Ah, we can sync the other phone, it's better. Cool. I like that. Okay, let's let's record something in. We'll finally record something. Like the legend of a phoenix. <laughs> absolute rip off chord progression but I don't think Universal Publishing will be watching this will they or Sony whoever loving that yeah loving that oh it needs a bit longer at the end Okay, that one is fire whoop. Should probably have called it a whoop, shouldn't I? Duplicate that layer. Complete. That'll take everything we need with it. Yeah, absolute rip off of Daft Punk there. I feel ashamed. Uh, okay, so I couldn't even help it though. I just felt like I don't know. It's just the chord progression felt natural. <laughs> okay, let's change this to uh, tick, 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 airport atmos with effects maybe. Oh my goodness. It just needs that groove in it. Like the legend of the phoenix. Oh my god, that's that's, that's perfect river. Okay, this is cool. But I feel like the timing 
So what I like to do is I'll create a preset or an instrument or a sound or a sample, anything, and then I'll tweak it. I'll get it to sort of a sound design session. I do these sessions all the time, you know, not just on live stream for ADSR. I'll do these throughout the week just to inspire. If I'm not in a, the mindset to create music, you know, produce music or compose or anything, I'll have a sound design session and that'll get creativity reignited easily. But also I create myself my own sounds that I can then use you know uh, but that what I mean is I, I repurpose I, I'll use the sounds but then tweak them to an individual project or a track <laughs> Okay, I'm not sure which one of those layers I'm going to use, to be honest. I like them both. So, we'll just keep them for now and see what we use. Uh, let's go on to a new one again. Uh, oh my goodness, the rise would be cool, wouldn't it? Cool. feeling why these sound so so similar they both have uh, that one's got fragments on it that's why that makes a lot of sense now that one needs to be in a bigger space Okay, let's come back to that one. That's pitched to the right note, hasn't it? Yeah. this whole thing down uh, uh, an octave what about with the bass pulse LFO Okay, duplicate another one. And I think this is where we'll maybe get that cool uh, 808 song again. Hydra's 808. Okay, I feel like this one might have some tuning issues potentially. Let's have a look. So the note here. Tuning by ear basically. Is that what this is? You know what, I 
could probably uh, use a multi stage here actually. somewhere cool okay we're having a bit of a re-triggering issue here so we don't need any of these sustain notes okay that's that sorted um da, 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 da. let's see about maybe keep this one get rid of this one and we're just the process here of trying things out I feel like I could even pitch the, uh, the the whole LFO down, the whole thing down. Uh, yeah, there is some glide on the uh, 808, someone legato Lee. Yeah, uh, if that's what you mean by legato, I think. Let's see what this is like down another 12. Probably be way too muddy. And this is where that 96k thing is probably quite helpful. Yeah, we all knew that was going to happen. Uh, So we could go in and do some fine tuning here. I'm sure there's a fine tune control, but it's not coming to me straight away. We could tune it easily. I'm sure there's a tuner. Da, 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 tuner. So it's at 440. Yeah. Yeah. That's where maybe a pitch shifting. I think I could tune it f down here. Ah, that's with there. Is there not a pitch? There's a pitch shifter with kilohertz, but that's not the uh, thing I'm thinking of. Oh, actually, yeah. No, that note's that's just wrong because the sharps and flats in the equivalent of the keys. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I think this sounds kind of good. the bend thing again oh man <laughs> sorry about this i can it's the uh, midi control on my keyboard is some sort of weird bend midi cc issue it's annoying it's really really annoying there we go i was on the right now all along okay that's how i do it okay let's do another What's this? Uh, I think that this could be more interesting. So this, I want to get rid of the uh, the tenor bass pulse thing and maybe try, uh, or even uh, even this could have the EFX fragments on it. Maybe <laughs> things that's already got a lot of information on it in terms of the LFO. Uh, what about waterfall octave? <laughs> bit too much, bit too much, bit messy. So if you're using this as a basis, as a fundamental, these sounds are more of like a... We're using them to put a sonic signature, our sound, all of that stuff on our music. Um, then now is the point where I have a pitch issue on my Novation launch key. Yeah, join the club. I, this is a nectar, but I don't know. Maybe it's just on the way out, but the bend thing is just... I've tried to tell it to stop receiving MIDI CC information from it, but ah, it's, I think it's time to call it a day with this one, to be honest. Um, 
Yeah, so now's the point to start layering in stuff uh, with other things because we've created a sound palette here which is unique um, and we can use this um, either as the basis of the composition of the beat or we can use it as like, you know, the sparkling on top of the stuff. So personally, I think you should always be recording stuff. If you hear something cool, don't worry, you haven't got your interface and your great mics or whatever. Just record it or get one of these or use it on your phone and uh, you can drop it into a sampler, drop it into a wavetable synth, stuff like that and process it. Um, it's a lot of fun working with audio and samplers though for sure. If you have any questions, uh, we've got about 15-20 minutes left. This has been an unbelievably quick stream in my opinion. I can't believe how quick this has gone. But any questions at all, please uh, feel free to ask as much as you want. If you have any recommendations for the next month's stream, more than welcome to recommend uh, any topics or, you know, techniques or specific things to us on the discord basically the last stream was all about the basics of sound design terminology and jargon and a lot of people when we're talking about the next streams were interested in how can i make my own sample library and i was thinking okay cool i can show you how to do that in contact but then i thought contact player the free version won't let you make your own free won't let you make your own in instruments and save them however the sampler that comes with studio one will so will the ableton one so will the one in logic so will the one in cubase and let's face it anyone watching this will have a door so um i thought let's just use a sampler like that because the only thing that's different here is we can't create our own artwork again another request for studio one but i think all all of these uh door companies should jump on this is Give your uh, door, like the sampler, a visual, uh, like a way to imprint your own artwork as an artist, um, and then like macros or something. You know what I mean? You can make your own instrument and almost like uh, you could, uh, as an artist or a, someone, you could sell it and uh, or just like uh, get tipped for uh, a free instrument that you've created f for your... So, for example, what I've basically just done now, but maybe polish it off with some nice illustration, you know, the whole package. That would be something that people should do. Basically, like... A more just push the samplers in these doors into more contact territory. Mm. But still a lot of fun, and really that's more about the visual side than the branding, so it's not essential. Thank you, uh, Jonathan, for uh, for watching. I'm really pleased that you got something from that. If you've enjoyed this, um, like I said, please consider. Uh, getting notifications turned on for the uh, second Sunday of each month with me um, and any suggestions for live streams please more than happy to take the suggestions you could even uh, drop us thoughts in the discord by the way before people go if you've enjoyed any of the sounds today they're all yours they're all free they'll be in the discord in the sound design chat in coming days you can either have the sample one xt instrument load it straight into sampler and Studio One, or you can have the audio files and drop them in your sampler of choice. I'm trying to please everyone here, but uh, yeah. Okay, so back to this. I'll be taking questions for these last 15 minutes and noodling, but nothing new. Blockchain, as in blockchain technology for like NFTs. I mean, it would be something cool. I don't think ADSR is into it, but it's interesting. The whole thing about non fungible tokens is blockchain just the technology that bridges the the gap, like Ethereum is the blockchain that NFTs are sold on, perhaps? There's the link for the Discord server, someone was saying they were having trouble finding it. Thanks for tuning in, Lee, I'm really pleased that you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you got something from it. I learnt less than this at university and I paid £28,000 for it, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, crypto's... it's interesting. I don't know how we're talking about it in this sound design, but it, yeah, it's sort of relevant. I know that uh, ADSR now accepts Bitcoin, though. How cool is that? I think they're probably one of the only people who are doing that, actually. Awesome. Won't be the last. That's great to hear. Thanks so much. Uh, oh yeah, so basically what I was going to say was I'd, I'd start fleshing this out more with uh, other instruments. Arteria pigments. I did have it up before. I got rid of it naively. Yeah, time flies when you're having fun. I can't believe how quick this has been. <laughs> Cool. You could talk.
totally put that over the top of this or something, couldn't you? Let's have a look. I just loop this section. <laughs> Oh, it's done that pitch thing. Oh my god. Wow. sound actually the first sound I've pulled up sounds kind of cool just give myself a bit of a counter or something and uh, see how it goes some of the root notes might need a bit of tune my goodness I cannot play at this click okay I've got that now just a little little melodic idea I feel like this is a bit melodic trap for me to that actually I was adding stuff before like red light district this is crying out for I love kilohertz stuff all of this is on the website by the way all of it we pick our root note in this case it's an F and you can basically um, increase the resonance with this cool sort of subharmonic generator so let's stick it here <laughs> Absolutely not right. Well, we're nearly there though. Is that is that right? Maybe. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, need my Schleiss tool. I've sort of had the bits of knowledge from different sources, but tonight is probably thing. Oh, that is that is a quote for uh, for the ADSR channel, Larry. Thank you so much. I mean that in a genuine way. That's that's such a nice thing to hear. I'm really pleased about that. Cool. I think we've uh, we've got some good bits here. Man, all we need now is some samples for drums and just grab them from the. Uh, just grab them from the uh, ADSR sample manager, like I said before. And we've got the basis of a beat, and everything is created from scratch apart from that pigment's lead line, which is awesome. Man, I need some vocals now, I find. Inspiring, I find. Oh, thank you, Player Boy Barley. That's awesome. So pleased to hear that. <laughs> Get rid of the fire web, I think. It doesn't, since we got the movement already from the other. So, I've got a palette of sounds with the virtual instrument, but the one I have decided to use is. The micro sampled 808 from Hydra's sound and the airport one, I think. Because it feels like it fits well with the harmonic content of what's already going on. The other stuff was too distracting. Uh, we've already got a very mid rangey sort of melodic thing. We just need a beat. This just need a beat. Like, oh wow. Uh, oh, I haven't downloaded XO. I've got XO, but it's not installed on this laptop. Damn. Uh, Go on to the old sample manager. See if I can just find like a a quick drum loop. Uh, 
drum. Um, uh, one shot kit kit is indie. I think I think I have to type. Oh, there's a way I can type in loop, but I've forgotten how to do it. I love that feature there though. Full. Download that sample. And we're downloading here the sample manager, storing all my samples, and drag it into my project here. I can also play it via MIDI, which is one of my favorite things, actually. Um, so this is uh, almost to the right tempo, 140, so a tad. Is that right? No, that's not right. Oh, I need a time stretcher. Uh, that's it. Okay, awesome. Could probably do with a big beefy kick underneath all that, to be honest. Oh yeah, I feel like we just need a kick. Is it really like a... Some drums kick. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's the one. Oh yeah. Oh, then that other one's nice though, isn't it? I didn't intend on making like a trap beat. This is not like me, you know. <laughs> oh boy, that's the. Uh, have I got the right thing rendered there? That looks like white noise. Uh, have I pulled out the wrong sample, perhaps? That's strange. Looks like white noise again, actually, doesn't it? Let's check that. Yeah, it is white noise. Uh, I've downloaded it. Oh. Let's just check this. Sorry, we've momentarily lost the... Uh, Right, so downloading. Uh, one shot. Yeah, I know. Apologies about that white noise if I absolutely tore you in two. I feel like it's, uh, I think the reason is just that it's downloading. Yeah, that's why we've got the white noise. So I just need to wait for this download to, to finish and keep an eye on it. So this is uh, this is what we're working with anyway. You know, I could probably even go into a, just for a bit of a, a basic kick. Stick with the personas theme. I have some kits here, bass kit. Chill, maybe. Okay, that's cool. Okay, I'll just record it on this one, this one line, and then I'll just sort it. Out. I change the grid to quarter notes. We're getting into a bit more of like a writing thing here, but you get the idea. I'm just trying to show you the versatility of the stuff that we've created here. Okay. Da, 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 da. Exciting part of this 
nice loop here actually. It's like here, isn't it? Or is it here? I really like that bit. I like this bit. Repetitive, but you get the idea. start to you know do your side chain with your your eight oh eight and stuff but this was created by us from a sample <laughs> do ask about it. this was created from an airport sample this was created from Hydrotech sample and it was sort of eight oh eight this is not created by us but I'm sure we could create something like that honestly uh, so yeah, there's a lot of samples that we haven't used here that are created by us. I mean, we could even... Uh could use this somehow as well. Uh, the, the rise is cool as well, isn't it? Crazy cracking fire. Da, da, da. One, two, three. Okay. Thanks for tuning in, Playboy Bowley. Appreciate that. We uh, we've only got min. Oh my God, minutes! It is the end. Holy moly, macaroni! That went fast. I can't believe how quick this has been. Okay, it's recap time. We have gone today. For anyone tuning in late, or anyone who just wants a general summary, we took these samples. See you later, Bowley. Yeah, thanks. We took these samples when they want to open up. Uh, like this sample here, for example, and before we did the um, magic on it, it sounded like this, and then we basically used uh, bell filters and pitched them to resonant frequencies which are based around 440 hertz to create this. And we did the same with a number of different samples, and we dropped them into sample one and we've turned them into our own virtual sound library here. And then we did some micro sampling and basically took a sample from Hydrotech. And uh, we, yeah, we basically took uh, uh, one of his uh, samples from a new pack that's coming up and turned it into our 808. And uh, micro sampling, probably go back and watch that chapter. And then I've used just a, an instance of pigments and some samples from the ADSR sample manager in the store. And uh, I'll make all of these available to Studio One users, to Ableton users, Logic, any door you like. Uh, but these predominantly will work best straight away in Studio One, Sample One XT. I'm going to play you guys out. Thank you so much for tuning in today. It's been a pleasure to be your host. Hope you've had a great Sunday. Uh, and uh, this has been a lot of fun. If you have any questions, uh, we can answer them later on a Discord jump on our discord server to suggest student, uh, future streams and uh, i've really enjoyed this thanks to everyone for tuning in thanks lee and uh, enjoy the play out
So I use a lot of Fab Filter stuff, Fab Filter Pro Q3, Slice is free, Slice EQ from Kilohertz is free uh, with any purchase on the store, you know? Um, and uh, Noise Shaper, all of the Kilohertz stuff, uh, Arturia Pigments, pretty much everything you've seen, everything I've created, apart from my own samples, but you can get them for free. So yeah, lots of fun. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope that you've got something from it. And I'd love to hear what you come up with with your own samples. And uh, I really look forward to seeing you in the next one, guys. So I'll play you out. Have a fantastic week. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And I'll catch you in four weeks' time, a month, second Sunday of the month, 6 p.m. GMT and 10 a.m. Pacific time, I believe. Thanks again so much, guys. I'll catch you on the Discord server. I'll see you in the next one.